France might be on the brink of history. The country's far right have surged one step closer to power, winning a landslide victory in the first round of national elections. Marine Le Pen's national rally won 33% of the vote. Much to President Emmanuel Macron's shock, his own centrist Together coalition slipped to the third place with just 20% vote share, while the left-wing New Popular Front won about 28%. This, remember, comes after Macron had himself called for a surprise snap election at the start of June this year. If Le Pen's national rally wins a majority in the second round of elections on the 7th of July, which looks quite possible now, European Union would be partially run by a party that, was, that has not hidden the fact that it wants power to get decentralized from Brussels, which is the headquarters of the EU. For the first time ever in France, a political party on the far right could win an overall majority of seats in the parliament through an election and could place its 28-year-old figurehead, Jordan Bardella, in Hotel de Matignon, the prime minister's office in Paris. Now, Brussels, meanwhile, has been concerned about Le Pen's stance on immigration and Islam, which have been regularly criticized as discriminatory. The party intends to introduce a law to combat Islamist ideologies by making it easier to close mosques and deport imams who are deemed to be radicalized. National Rally's national preference ideology extends to prioritizing French-born citizens for health care and state benefits. For Macron, though, it's been a huge setback and it could mean teaming up with opposition parties or what they call cohabitation, much like the India bloc that we've seen here in India and stop the rise of Le Pen and the far right in the country. Would that be possible? In Macron versus Le Pen, how will the French political ecosystem move forward? And what does the rise of the far right in Europe say about changing priorities of citizens across the world? Let's try and understand this with my guest tonight. I'm joined by Francois Gauthier, senior journalist. I'm also joined by Dr. Swasti Rao, Associate Fellow at Manohar Parikar Institute. Good evening. Namaskar to both of you. Thank you very much for joining us on Mirror Now. Francois Gauthier, let me start with you. How do you see this really? A big setback for President Emmanuel Macron and a rise for the first time in France for the far-right parties. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Macron uh, took a gamble because uh, his party did badly in the European elections. Uh, so he thought that the the fear of the far right in France would uh, give him a majority if he dissolved the parliament. So he actually, you know, he had two more years to run as the president. And uh, he's a likable man. Uh, he's a young, he's smart, he's intelligent. Uh, he's been heavily criticized in France. You know, as some as a Frenchman who lives in India, when I go to France and I see the way they criticize their own president, I'm, I'm a little, you know, shocked. But nevertheless, he took the wrong gamble and uh, he lost uh, because uh, his party uh, didn't do well uh, in the first round. And though in the second round, as usual, all the leftist party and the rightist party, except the far right parties, will, will ally together to defeat uh, uh, the far right of Mrs. Le Pen. Usually that works, but this time I'm not so sure. Okay, can I also ask you, uh, Francois Gauthier, then can we assume uh, that President Macron's presidency is effectively over two years ahead of when his tenure gets over? Because it, it is a clear signal of rejection from the citizens. He, the the problem is with the, the Hamas, the, the, the Israeli uh, Hamas war has split France in two, because uh, on the one hand, uh, we saw uh, you know, the left uh, and even some of the right, center-right uh, part, political parties take a stand for Hamas. Uh, Mr. Macron uh, tried to play both sides and distance himself, but I think a lot of people in France are shocked by seeing the amount of pro-Palestine manifestation there are in Paris, and they're getting scared. And this is why Mrs. Le Pen is gaining at the moment a, a lot of votes because of this war, because of the pro-Hamas uh, um, stances of many political parties. Uh, I'm talking about white ethnic political parties and white ethnic politicians, French politicians, who have taken a stand for Hamas and for Palestine. So 
this has been in, in my mind some people might disagree with me this has been a game changer and mr macron mm -hmm. made a mistake uh, he he dissolved the assembly at the wrong time and he didn't think about this hamas uh, um, problem that uh, is dividing france deeply you know the french are scared of more immigration uh the french are scared because uh, mm -hmm. the the i go to france i just came from france you know the prices are increasing all the time I don't know whether it is because of the Ukraine war, because of mis economic mismanagement, but French prices are increasing all the time. So the French voters are unhappy. So maybe okay. out of unhappiness, they will vote for the far right uh, also in the second round. And anyway, Mr. Macron has lost. He is not going to become president again. I doubt it. OK, let me take this across to Dr. Swasti Rao. Dr. Swasti. Uh, what are the reasons you would attribute to the rise of far right and not just France, but across Europe? We've seen that in the EU parliamentary elections. We saw that in uh, Italy, Hungary, and now, of course, France. Uh, is there some sort of disillusionment that is happening with the left parties? Is there some sort of frustration uh, with them that is now uh, inclining citizens to go for far right parties? Right. A very good evening to you, Shreya. I hope I'm uh, audible and a very good evening to our French guest as well. Uh, now to your question directly, what has led to the rise of the right wing in, in or the rise of anti-immigration sentiment? Now, the first thing first, I think it needs to be uh, made clear that it's not that the it, it's not that the left is actually supporting immigration. You have to understand that the European project is led by the centrist grouping okay so the centrist grouping the european liberal party hmm. you know etc you know those are the parties that they are a, you know a group of three four parties that actually are all centrist parties that actually win most of the seats and that is how the european project is sort of led on now what has happened in france and i have not just in france but all over europe and i have tried to clarify it again and again is that if you remember right after the Arab Spring of 2011, which turned to Arab winter very soon, you had this massive influx of refugees yeah. from that region, North Africa, Middle East region, uh, into, into Europe. And uh, although the European Union did have something uh, which qualified as a common asylum law, it was not equipped to actually handle such a huge uh, you know, influx, which ran into millions. So because of that, uh, they had something which was called the Dublin Regulation. It kind of fell flat. It was not able to um, to uh, divide mm. the influx of uh, those refugees. And as, as a result, because the, you know, the Arab uh, problem never really ended and it went on sort of adding on, um, you know, you had more and more refugees coming into Europe, not just from uh, uh, from from um, the Middle East, mm. North African region and initially, but also then from Afghanistan. And, you know, from, from Ukraine and and it's, yeah. it's not ending, okay? So what has happened is that because uh, at the heart of this problem is that the Europeans have not been able to come up with a common asylum law, which is acceptable to everybody in Europe. And then as a result, you have had um, clashes, you have had violence, and this has been festering for over a decade now. And many analysts would have probably said that Europe is actually sitting on a time bomb and it is sitting on a ticking time bomb. And all these rise that you see in the, the, the right wingers, the far right, who actually um, come to, uh, who actually win these votes because on, on the uh, aspect of identity, yeah. politics, etc., all of them are actually, uh, they, they kind of resonate with the, uh, with the public in, in Europe because they, they see their culture, cultural, so to say, identity getting and, and very, Dr. very And therefore, Dr. Swasti do you see this really uh, finding a resolution anytime soon? How do you see this really moving forward? No. Because it's so, not just a France issue. You're seeing yeah. the uh, immigration anger and angst across Europe, across United States as well. Do you see this uh, really seeing any sort of resolution? Yeah, I think that's a very important question because one has to understand something. So, so you, I, I'm sure you've heard of, uh, um, you know, Meloni. You have heard of Giorgia Meloni, who was Italy's firebrand uh, yeah. leader and also a leader of the far right, etc. Now, the way out is that we have to understand something, that Europe is also in demographic decline. So while on the one hand, um, 
there is so much rhetoric uh, uh, against okay or against these uh, refugees but on the other hand um, they they would be in a in a real serious uh, labor shortage if there weren't any immigrants coming into europe so i think what europeans need to do and that is where the focus has been and not just in italy or not just in france but all across europe if you look at sweden if you look at all other countries poland the hmm. focus has been on actually making immigration yeah. as legal as possible and when you when they say legal what they actually have in mind is trying to come up with a common asylum law that can be accepted by all 27 member states in the european union because also remember that in the european union you have states which have extreme positions like hungary that have declared a zero uh, you know immigration yeah. etc so i think that is where uh, the thing lies ultimately whenever the far right leaders have actually won the elections a very good example of that is georgia meloni and i'll connect it to mahila pen as well that when she has actually become uh, she's actually formed the government you see that she has toned down her rhetoric against immigration mm. and now she's sort of trying to become more mainstream similarly even with marie la pen you must remember that as long as she is not in the government okay and the french people are also sort of you know having this great anti incumbency you know right now and they are just sick of seeing macron for the last 10 years and macron is going to remain president until 2027 after which he obviously cannot run yeah. for president again the point was about his legacy which is which seems to be in trouble but coming up but talking about marie la pen uh, right now if at all there is a situation that they get an absolute majority they get about 289 seats which are required uh, they seem to be close to it but let's see after 7 july where the situation is and if uh, jordan bartela okay. who is the uh, successor to marila pen if he if he becomes the yeah. prime minister we will see that you know once they have really given the task to run the government they will have to tone down that rhetoric because i'm sure you have seen how riots have descended all over france it's very scary so my last point is i think yeah. of course yeah, they have been... has committed a mistake but i think somewhere it is a calculation shreya that he wants to actually let the far right run the government and see that they can't really go very uh, you know much ahead with the kind of policies and they will have to sort of mainstream themselves a little bit more so i think that is what is happening and definitely there okay, is a okay okay so we have to see dr swasti how it really pans out on the 7th of july and how it really moves forward for emmanuel macron the president of france i'll have to leave it there I have paucity of time dr swasti rao and francois gotier thank you very much to both of you for joining us on nation tonight and sharing your perspective on this big setback to french president emmanuel macron thank you very much